Probably my favorite kind of in-betweeny episode is the one where I get to cover a major tournament. Well, guess what we are doing today? The year is 2022, the destination is Qatar. Who is up for some World Cup action? <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Jochen aka Leo Demas and welcome to part 21, a World Cup edition if you will, of Stuttgart über alles. In this FM21 series I try to transform newly promoted Bundesliga club Stuttgart into a European freaking giant. If you are enjoying the series so far or you are new to the channel and you like and hear what you see, give me a big thumbs up on the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Whack on that notification button so we can keep doing this thing together. To start off, a little service announcement. I have downloaded two face packs. The first is the Mega Pack on FM Scout. I have put links down in the description. Matthias Arenzo, for example, now has an actual face, as does our good friend and vice captain, Mr. Sandro Tonani. I mean, it's a lot better. I think this way we can get even more emotionally connected with these players um, so yeah I think if I go to my dynamics to my hierarchy everyone except for Burak Ince and Davino Knoppe has an actual face now the second face pack is even more awesome in my opinion it is the regen face pack on FM base also link is down in the description it's pretty easy to set up if you follow the instruction video should you need any help let me know down in the comment section but, for example, our good friend Mr. Vrucina, who is a regen, now has an actual face. Instead of the like pre-designed uh, computer face, if you will, this is an actual player, uh, Idonis. But all these guys are all new gens or regens, whatever you call them, and they all have faces now. In most cases, it is pretty accurate, man, because look at this, Valery Makarov. He is um, 16 years old, Russian. I believe that. I believe that, that this is a 16-year-old Russian guy. It's not always spot on. For example, Mr. Quentin Cross, 17-year-old. Hmm. Seems a little old, older to me, but I will take it because, of course, they will grow older. The face will stay the same. And then it is a perfect match. Awesome stuff from FM Base. And now, of course, for the World Cup 2022 in Qatar. Let's first go over all the groups. Uh, FYI, I did play on one day too much because you can see there already have been four games. Two in this group and two in Group B. But nothing spectacular has happened, so I think we are going to be okay. In Group A, we have Senegal, Sweden, Slovenia and Qatar themselves. Now, Senegal has already beaten Qatar 3-0, which was probably the opening game of the tournament. And Slovenia and Sweden have drawn 3-3. I think... Um, phew, it's a tough one. I would say Sweden any day, and then Senegal or Slovenia probably... Slovenia, although I am not sure. I'm not really familiar with those teams. Let's have a look. 57th on the world ranking and Senegal, who? 14th. And Sweden, 19th. Senegal is actually the highest placed team, uh, nation in this group. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna say Senegal and Sweden then. Group B, Australia, Gedeimite. Stop, stop doing the accents. Holland, Spain, and Chile. Uh, Spain and Holland have already drawn 1-1, and Chile have lost from Australia 2-3. So I think, even with Australia having three points already, I am going to say Holland and Spain, of course. Group C, we have Iran, Jamaica, Portugal, and Uruguay. Without any doubt in my mind, I'm going to say Portugal and Uruguay. Maybe Iran can oh, kind of surprise everyone, but I don't think so, to be honest. So, Portugal and Uruguay here. Group D, Colombia, Egypt, France, and the US and a. Now, this is an exciting group, man. 
Uh, France, I think by now, is first on the world ranking. Yep, there we go. They have knocked mighty Belgium off their throne. Um, so yeah, France, of course, because they have an awesome team also in 2022 and for many years to come, if you ask me. Uh, and then for the second place, I think Egypt have Mo Salah, who is in this safe at Real Madrid, I think. Yep, Mohamed Salah, Real Madrid. But that's about it. I mean, they have other decent players, but not of that quality. So I think, I hope, let's put it that way, I hope USA goes through. But I think it will probably go between Colombia and USA, right? So most exciting group so far, I think. Group E, England, Germany, New Zealand, and Nigeria. Um, the pity is that Germany has like a fake team because... Football manager does not have the license, oops, the license for the national team of Germany. So all fake players, how good are they? Nobody knows. So excited to see how this will turn out. They are still seventh in the world ranking. But I think it's a pretty lame thing that they still don't have a license for that team. But hey, um, so if I consider that, I will probably say England and Germany or and I really hope so because I hate the fact that they're that this is a fake team, the German team. I hope that England and Nigeria will go through. Group F, Argentina, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Italy and South Korea. Also a very interesting group because Argentina is fifth on the world ranking. Italy probably also top 10. Yep, ninth. South Korea is 22nd, but as we all know... They can always cause like a surprise. Bosnia, hmm, 41st on the world ranking and they have Jacob, but he is like 40 by now, 36, okay. And that's about it. So not to diss Bosnia and Herzegovina, but I'm afraid they don't really stand a chance here. I'm going for Argentina and Italy with possibly South Korea causing an uprise. Group G, here we go. Belgium, Benin, wow. They are 66th on the world ranking. Um, huh. I wonder who they have kicked out to be in the World Cup, to be honest. But hey, Belgium, Benin, Denmark and Japan, I think, out of the big teams, Belgium so far has the easiest group. Although Japan is always like a question mark how good they are going to be, but come on. We should beat them, and I guess they are the second best team in the group, Denmark. 16th on the world ranking nah i'm not sure they have some decent players but i mean come on the level in bel and the belgian squad is way above these three so i'm going to say belgium and denmark there we go and the last group group h brazil croatia ivory coast and mexico wow we this is an awesome group uh, Brazil is probably, oh, they're second on the world ranking, and Croatia is 11th. Um, but they have, of course, a pretty decent team with Kovacic. Modric, of course, is a little bit older now, 37, and he has no club, but look at these mental attributes. Dayam, maybe this is an option. He's probably retiring, yep. He's retiring, so I don't think he is in the actual squad. Um, but Ivory Coast is always a mystery. They can be really good or they can suck tremendously. And Mexico is pretty much the same thing. They are 17th in the world ranking. They have some awesome players with, of course, Raul Jimenez and Irving Lozano, um, which is a, an attacking threat. I mean, they're one of the best in the world, their front line, to be honest. Jesus Corona, who the hell is he? From Porto. Oh, we went to Man United. Also a, a winger or an inside forward. So attacking wise, they are really dangerous. But nonetheless, I still think that in this group, Brazil and Croatia will proceed to the next round. So I'm going to play all that. Let, let those games play off camera. And then we will come back to see how all these groups turned out. Now, before we go to the results of the group phase, FYI, we have, with Stuttgart, five players who are actually participating in the World Cup. 
Amadozic of course for Bosnia and Herzegovina, Arezzo for Uruguay, Sandro Tonali himself for Italy, Borna Sosa for Croatia, and of course Alexis Salamakas for Belgium. And he got injured in the very first game. Awesome. Alrighty, the verdict in Group A is that Sweden and Slovenia have qualified for the next round. Senegal didn't and Qatar, hmm, zero points, three out of three losses. Kind of to be expected, of course, but still, especially this game, man. Sweden butchered Senegal with 6-0. Let's have a look at the other results. Slovenia also beat Senegal 3-0 and Sweden 4-0 against Qatar. To be expected, although I wasn't really sure between Slovenia and Senegal. Well, now we know. In Group B, no real surprises there. Spain and Holland are going through. Holland beat Chile. They have beaten Australia as well. Spain butchered Chile with 5-0. Um, and I think the draw, we already saw that. So, Spain and Holland for Group B. Pretty much the same story in Group C, although... Quite close, if you ask me, closer than I would have expected. Um, but of course, mainly because Jamaica butchered Iran, 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 however you want to call it, with 4 to 1. Portugal have beaten Uruguay 2 to 1, then Uruguay beat Iran with 4 1 as well. Um, Portugal 5 2 against Iran, and Uruguay then in the, deci the deciding game, really. 4-3, so a very close call against Jamaica, but because of that, they proceed to the next round with Portugal. This is kind of a surprise. I mean, France, we all knew that they were going through, but they only had 7 points because they drew against Colombia. Um, but then USA, man. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My dear friends from the US and A, 3 out of 3 losses, 0 points, of course. No bueno. They have lost to Egypt first, 3-4. to four. Mo Salah, of course, scored. Then they lost to France. I get that. And then, hmm, once again, they lost against Colombia, 3-1. to one. So France and Colombia be, have beaten Egypt and USA in the Group D. In Group E, the probably inevitable has happened. England and Germany have qualified, although Germany... Like I mentioned, have a fake name team. Still, Nigeria mostly and also New Zealand didn't really succeed in knocking them out of the group stage. So, England has won 2-0 against Nigeria. Germany beat New Zealand. England and Germany drew 2-2 and you can pretty much guess the final results. England have beaten New Zealand and Germany drew 2-2 against Nigeria. In Group F, same story, the inevitable, I would say, Italy and Argentina have qualified. South Korea and Bosnia and Herzegovina are out of here. Let's have a look at these games. Uh, first, South Korea have beaten Bosnia and Herzegovina. Argentina and Italy drew 0-0. Then Messi is still there in Argentina, so there is still a chance that he will win a trophy today. Uh, they beat South Korea 2-0, as did Italy Ooh, with Tonali scoring, our vice captain on the score sheet, yes sir. Uh, then Argentina 3-0 against Bosnia. And the final game, Italy also won 3-0 against South Korea. And this is what I'm talking about, baby. 9 out of 9 for my home nation of Belgium. A 14-2 uh, goal difference. I mean, what can I say? Come on. 4-0 against Japan, 7-0 against Benin, and then the first game 3-2, a hmm, victory against Denmark, and also in that game Salamakas got slightly injured, which was still okay, but then a couple of days later in this game against Japan he got severely injured, so he is out for two weeks, I don't know, but I think that means that his tournament is pretty much over, even if they reach, for example, the final which is a bummer for our right wing back slash defensive winger. But hey, so uh, apart from Belgium, Denmark also qualified, which was to be expected. Maybe Japan could have nah, done something, but they didn't. And then the first real surprise, the bombshell, if you will, Brazil is last in Group H and they are going home, along with Ivory Coast, because Croatia and Mexico have qualified. 
Brazil have drawn three times. They scored once. Oh, and they also conceded one goal. So an abysmal result for Brazil. Uh, I'm very happy for Croatia because I really like that team. And also Mexico because they always surprise me in those big tournaments. I mean, pity for Brazil. But hey, if you draw three games out of three, this is to be expected. So that brings us to the second round in the World Cup. Let's have a look at these games. Sweden, Holland, Slovenia, Spain, Colombia, Portugal, uh, Uruguay, France. Ooh, England, Argentina, sweet mother of God. Italy, Germany, also a big, big game, especially if German, <laughs> Germany had had a actual team. Mexico, Belgium, I think we are okay, although what I just said about Mexico still stands, so be careful. Uh, and Croatia and Denmark, so I would say probably in order, Holland, Spain, Portugal, France... Uh, should I go for Argentina? For the sake of Lionel Messi, I'm going for Argentina. But actually, to be honest, I think England is going to win this. Then I hope Italy beats Germany because of Tonali. Belgium will beat Mexico. And Croatia will beat Denmark. Let's have a look. Okay, here we go. Well... Let's start with a surprise. Sweden kicked out Holland with 2-0. to nil. Then Spain uh, have won against Slovenia. Portugal have won 2-0 to nil against Colombia. France against Uruguay. So those three are kind of what I predicted. England have beaten Argentina with 2-0. to nil. Have a quick look at the match stats. Wow, and they actually deserved it. Goals from Rhys James and Harry Kane in the 94th minute with a penalty. To send Argentina and Lionel Messi probably home from his last World Cup. So, sorry Lionel. Also in my safe, I could not help you getting get a trophy. Miss Cousy. Italy lost with penalties. Come on. Against Germany. Damn it. Uh, Mexico have lost to Belgium. 1-0. A tough one though. Let's have a look at these match stats. Okay, Belgium were the better team. Axel Witzel scored in the 10th minute. Um, yeah, okay, we are through. That's all that matters. And Croatia have beaten Denmark 1-0. Let's have a look at the quarter finals. Sweden is facing France. That'll probably be the last uh, game Sweden plays in this World Cup. Spain versus Portugal. Always a fun game to be part of. England versus Croatia. Okay, and Germany against Belgium. Um, I would dare to hope that we kick out that fake name team. I mean, come on, Belgium. Okay, hold the freaking phone. What is happening with this Swedish national team? They have kicked out France with penalties. But I mean, come on. Wow, 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 wow. They pretty much have done what we tend to do, at least last season, against the big boys, <laughs> counter the hell out of them. Because, I mean, the possession is quite even, but France have a lot more shots and a lot higher XG, but simply couldn't finish the job. So they are going home, as is Spain, because Portugal have beaten them. Is Cristiano Ronaldo still there? Yes, he is. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, he is. Um... England have beaten Croatia with 2-0. Let's have a look at these match stats. Well-deserved. Harry Kane once again. And Raheem Sterling sealed the deal for England. So, nice. And then, in extra time, Belgium have kicked out fake team Germany 3-2. Let's see. <laughs> Divock Origi himself, of all people, of all strikers we have, Mr. Divock Origi decides to score a hat-trick in the quarterfinal of the World Cup. Damn. Because now it is getting pretty exciting, guys. Sweden versus Belgium in the semi-final. And at the other semi-final, Portugal, Portugal, Portugal versus England. We have a European domination at the World Cup. But, I mean, 
I can see if I can predict, and it's not because Belgium is my home nation, but I mean, come on, we should beat Sweden. It's as simple as that. And then Portugal, England, man. Mm, I'm going to say England. So the final will be Belgium, England. Let's find out. Oh, yes, we have reached the final of a World Cup. Romelu Lukaku himself, Big Rom, scored two goals. And that is why Sweden is going home and Belgium is facing England in the final. Wow, we. They have beaten Portugal. Raheem Sterling scored once again. And I think, guys, that we are simply going to attend that game. Mm -hmm. This episode keeps getting better, man. We have signed a new fullback, Musa Wagwe. You might know him from his time at Barcelona. Well, he was still at Barcelona, I think. Uh, oh no, he went to Milan for 1.7 million. He was unhappy for some reason. Let's see. Lost trust in the Milan manager. Okay. But he is a very good right wing back, which we can use as an attacking wing back or an attacking inverted wing back. <laughs> Um, but you might ask, why the hell did you sign him? Didn't you have wingbacks enough? Well, yes, but my friend Henriks is wanted by several clubs. Look at this uh, positions tab, by the way. It is insane. He can pretty much play everywhere on the pitch. But he is wanted by several clubs, including Schalke, uh, Gangzhou, which is probably a Chinese club, and Yangtze also. I'm pretty sure they are going to get some offers in in the January transfer window. And to be honest, I paid like um, 2 million, I guess. 2.1 million for Wague. That is nothing because I know him from previous football managers as well. Um, he's awesome. He's simply awesome. 2.1 is nothing compared to his talent. So if I can basically swap Henriks for Wague, I am all for it. Little in betweeny, let's go to the game. Here we go. Come on, Belgium. And I know a lot of you are English and are supporting the other team, but I don't care. Let's go to kickoff, please. Here we go. Let's see, Kevin De Bruyne. No, we don't even have time. What's that? What is that? Oh, come on. Come on, not a penalty after five minutes? Really, football manager? Don't be that guy. Oh. Hashtag sucks. What is the decision? Of course a penalty is awarded. Mr. Harry Kane with his, what, like 20 on penalty taking? Come on, Thibaut Courtois. Come on. Mm, damn it. We are 1-0 down after 6 minutes because of a freaking penalty. Mm. Well, all is to play for because we are only 6 minutes in. Let's skip this one. Let's pause game for just a brief minute because I just want to see the uh, formations. Let's see. We have... Can I get this wider? Nope, I cannot. We have Courtois and Gould. Then we have a back three of Van Heusden, Den Donker and Den Nier. Salamakers on... Or Salamakers on the right wing back. Castagne on the left wing back. De Bruyne is the captain also a central midfielder with Yuri Tillemans, of course. Where is Eden Hazard? Is he probably injured because he should be here, right? Well, he isn't. Okay, no Hazard. Uh, Origi on the right wing. Doku, awesome talent on the left wing. And of course, Big Rom in the striker position. For England, we have Ramsdale in goal, Alexander-Arnold, Maguire, Stones and Gomez as the back four. Henderson in the DM position. Two midfielders with Mount and Rice. Awesome. 
Sterling on the right side, Jaden Sancho himself on the left side, on the wing, and striker and captain Harry Kane. I mean, a pretty decent squad on both sides of the pitch, if you ask me. Come on. Okay, probably a first highlight for Belgica. Salah Marcus with the throw-in. To Origi gets it back to De Bruyne. Awesome cross, big rum. Ooh, I think he hit the crossbar and or the keeper. But that was threatening for show. Sterling now with the ball to Declan Rice. Alexander-Arnold for the overlap to Mason Mount. Please someone mark Alexander-Arnold right there. Oh, sweet mother of God. We're going to lose. England are going to be world champions, guys. That was offside. It was not offside. We are 2-0 down. Raheem Sterling himself. I think he is probably going to be the uh, the golden boot of the tournament because every game, every result I saw from England, he actually scored, I think. Oh, I really thought it was offside. Beautiful pass by Harry Kane, though. Damn it. We are 2-0 down after 20 minutes. This is going well. Almost half an hour in and not a highlight since that second goal. Um, if we look at the match stats, it is a pretty even game. The only difference is that England is much more clinical than Belgium. Okay, Salamagas heads it away to absolutely no one. Henderson picks it up to Gomez. Henderson once again to Mason Mount. And that is bad marking. Which you probably shouldn't do with Harry Kane and Raheem Sterling. We oh we were almost 3-0 down. Oh god. Well, there's nothing I can do, so sue me. Mason Mount with the corner kick, and Donker heads it away, falls to Declan Rice, which is still one of my favorite midfielders in the whole game of football manager with Tonali. Kamavinga, of course, Jaden Sancho, and is that a save? Yes. Thibaut Courtois. Saves the day, although I don't know if it still can be saved that day. Harry Kane, nope, Origi heads it away. The highlight keeps going though. Sancho keeps it in bounds to Declan Rice once again. Okay, the highlight ends. We have reached halftime, a 2-0. Um, like I said, match stats wise, pretty even game, although they have a much higher XG score as you can also see here. I mean, this is the penalty, so that bump, yeah. Start second half, please. First highlight, Courtois with the goal kick. Trossard gets it to Castagne, to Jason Denier. And I mean, we don't have the superstar team anymore that we have now in real life, or maybe that we had two years ago. Um, but still, it's a decent team. There are some very good young talents with Tillemans, Doku, Salamakers, of course. But I am surprised that we have reached the final. So, good on you, football manager. Trosano with the ball. Can he skip past that man? Or Yep, he crosses it. Origi, Salamakers to Witzel, but he gets blocked. Ooh, they're playing the offside trap. There is Origi again. Bam! <laughs> Okay, Divock Origi is quite the killer man in 2022. Damn it. Look at this. I really thought he was going to be offside, but that's a very good ball by Witzel. To Origi with a little bit of not even luck, but he hesitates, but then rockets it into the back of the net. Um, okay, new highlight. Gomez with the throw in. Gets kicked away and gets to Harry Maguire. Sterling now to Mason Mount. And of course, England have an awesome team. Don't get me wrong. I am not against England. But if they are playing Belgium, I am pro-Belgium. I can hope that you can understand that, right? 70-minute mark. It's still a pretty even game apart from that XG score. Um, but I think England is in fact going to be... Ooh, 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 ooh. With Sal with the ball after the throw-in with Salamakers. Zinho van Heusden crosses it, but it gets headed away. Falls to Castagne now. Van Aken. Van Heusden, Witzel. Crosses it. Big Rom. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I also think he was offside. But it doesn't matter. Um, five and something minutes left. Come on, guys. 
Five minutes of extra time, sweet mother of God. I think this is going to be it, yep. Here you go. You're welcome, England. They have won the World Cup in Qatar in 2022. The captain, Harry Kane, is about to take that trophy. Oh, or is it okay? I thought it was the manager. No, sir. Here he is. Ba 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 bam! Fireworks at all. Congratulations, England. After we were third in 2018, we are now second in 2022. And, hmm, of course, I would have loved to win, but I'll take it. And to close off, of course, let's have a look at the awards. And it's not Sterling that has the golden boot, as I expected. He scored six goals. Cristiano Ronaldo, at age 37, scored eight goals and gave one assist. But top goal scorer is this guy, Alexander Isaac. He is Swedish. He is at Real Madrid in my save. Um, but when you start the game, he is at Real San Sebastian. Previously at Dortmund, because that is where I know him from. He is a, I think then he was a wonder kid, but he is 23 years old now. So probably I haven't scouted him here. But if, if I look at these like indications, he's a pretty decent player. Uh, what else do we have? Goal of the tournament. I don't really want to see that. The dream team. Of course, a lot of guys from England and Belgium. And basically, Cristiano Ronaldo, Olsen and Isaac from Sweden complete the starting 11. Okay. Denier and Witzel and Lukaku from Belgium. Sterling, James, Gomez and Chilwell and Ramsdale from England. Best young player. Charles de Ketelare, another awesome talent. I am going to scout him. He is worth, I mean... He's pretty much out of my league, uh, finance-wise. But hey, I'll scout him. He is still... Oh, he's at Chelsea. I was going to say, is he still at Club Brugge? No, he is not. He went to Chelsea for 37 million guacamoles. Um, oh, let's go back to this here. That's the best young player. What else do we have? The best player, of course. And there he is, Mr. Raheem Sterling. Six goals, one assist, an average rating of seven point. 84, which is awesome. The other usual, usual suspects are again here, Isaac and Cristiano. The last one, the best goalkeeper, since he was in the starting 11 or in the dream team, Aaron Ramsdale, 24 years old, from England. That was all from Qatar. So guys, if we morph back into Stuttgart mode... Um, I am probably going to be back. Let's do another cup game, shall we? Let's come back in the for the Hamburg game uh, in the third round of the cup because the board wants us to club vision, reach the quarterfinal, which we do if we win that game. So it's kind of important. So let's come back for that game. And I think after that, I will fast forward to March uh, to the youth intake because, because, because... We have had a preview. Let's have a look. There are a healthy number of new fullbacks in the pipeline. Well, uh, at least one of our center backs looks promising. We have one good young Greek central defender. That's probably the same guy from Theo Petra, uh, who has caught the eye. This is a good group of players coming through. So far for the positive news. Then there's no new wingbacks coming through. Most of the goalkeepers suck. The fullbacks coming through are not the best, okay, but we have a healthy number of them, luckily. Um, defensive midfielders are not looking great, attacking midfielders, same story, and basically wingers and strikers as well. So I think <laughs> my entire hope is set on that one center back and possibly a couple of fullbacks. We'll see. Stay tuned. So guys, that was it for this World Cup edition of Stuttgart über alles. I really hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have because, I mean, Belgium in the final? Yes, please. If you also enjoyed it, leave me a big thumbs up on the video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel with that notification button whacked because I want to keep doing this thing together with you. I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you 
very soon. Mm-hmm.